I'm Shannon Clee of the Canadian HR Reporter TV. Roger Martin is the Dean of the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management. He spoke about using design thinking to boost innovation at a Strategic Capability Network event in Toronto. What is design thinking? Design thinking is the combination of the best of analytical thinking, where we're taking the past data and inductively or deductively concluding something to be true, and intuitive thinking, knowing without reasoning, where we're attempting to invent something that does not now exist. It's the combination of those two forms of thinking. Can you give me an example of an organization that has successfully used design thinking? Procter & Gamble is, is a good example. As of, 19, uh, as of 2000, it was a slow-growing uh, company. Its gr uh, growth had slowed to uh, one or two percent per year. It was losing share in seven of its top ten uh, uh, brands, and it was a forty billion dollar uh, company. Uh, they, uh, the CEO, uh, A.G. Lafley, uh, appointed his first ever head of design, innovation, and strategy, Claudia Kotchka, in two thousand and one, and brought design thinking to the organization. And during the decade of of uh, the, the 2000s, they've grown profits at about 15% a year, sales at about 10% a year, and are an $80 billion uh, company with, with increasing share in virtually all of their brands. What is the biggest barrier to innovation? It's a over-reliance on analytical thinking uh, that's driven by reliability, producing consistent results, and exploiting current knowledge. And so when an organization has that as their culture, uh, you drive out innovation. How can HR help drive innovation in an organization? One is to make sure in selection, because HR is sort of the gatekeeper of an entry to the organization in selection. They're selecting for people who are not simply analytical, but also have imagination and are willing to explore uh, the future. Two, because HR tends to be the dominant force in creating compensation systems, is to make sure your compensation systems don't inadvertently uh, reward exploitation over exploration. So don't give high compensation to running the same old business the same way you did last year and low com compensation to somebody who's got a small business who needs to absolutely turn it, turn that around by, by being creative. Uh, and, and three, by, by influencing the, some of the processes that they can for evaluating uh, uh, people for promoting uh, people. Uh, if you promote, again, on the basis of reliable results, you'll get reliability-oriented people ever higher in the organization. If you promote on the basis of creativity, you'll get, you'll get more uh, validity-oriented people higher in the organization. Can you explain the difference between exploitation and exploration? Exploitation is, is trying to get the most out of what you know how to do today. So let's say you have a brand and you are selling that brand in a certain way and it has a certain imagery and the product looks a certain certain way through a certain distribution channel. Exploitation would be making sure you get 100% distribution in those distribution channels, that you advertise that same message more, uh, that you cut some costs to make sure that the price is as, as low as it can be to the consumer. You're trying to exploit what you now know and what you now have. Exploration would be to say, you know what, there are new consumer needs in, in, our, in our industry and our current products or services don't really cut it. We need to try something new and something different to satisfy this new and emerging need. And that'll require a new product with a new brand positioning and maybe even a different distribution channel. That would all be exploration of that which we do not now know how to do.